G'day, Pete Freaks. It's Mark here, and um, I've got the pleasure of having BJ Radomski here with us. Um, as I tweeted out a couple of days ago, and I've been telling people, uh, BJ is a Pete friend here in Bangkok. Right. BJ, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure. Indeed, pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, inspiring the uninspired, <laughs> um, which a little bit goes against the grain of, of what I believe, because rightly or wrongly, I love being around inspired mm. people right. um, and I, I again uh, generally tend to be, get frustrated with uninspired people. Mm. Talking to you um, and I'll let you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do, who you work with, um, how you actually inspire the uninspired yeah. and why would you want to do that? But tell us a little bit about yourself. BJ. Okay, great. I look forward to getting to the inspiring the uninspired part. Yeah. That, uh, that I, look, I look forward to. So a little bit about me, <clears throat> uh, linked very much with the name of your podcast is uh, I help pe people create peak performance in their life, how to create success in your life. And I do that with, um, originally my focus when I started was uh, those in business. I worked primarily with uh, executives, and since then I've added a, a clientele of people creating that success in their life in fitness and health and in, in overall well-being and the reason is is the ecology of it all is that you you cannot have success in only one area of your life the imbalance uh, the imbalance is gonna uh, is gonna hurt you if you're not functioning in your family eventually your fitness will suffer mm. if you're not functioning professionally you're not going to be able to afford the protein powders or the gym memberships. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's creating an, 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 a, a big picture or an ecological look mm. at your life mm. and building success in all of those areas. And not all of us are inspired in all of those areas, but we'll get to that. Mm. We'll get that in a little bit, mm. uh, a little bit later, I think, in the chat. Mm. And how I came to this is, um, well, what is the expression? Necessity is the mother of invention. Is that it? Uh, I had, I guess, you know, maybe like you, Mark, I mean, you're, you're full of inspiration. You've got tremendous energy, right? And so I had this energy and I had all this inspiration. I had all this drive and all this motivation. And... Um, had generated a fair amount of success fairly early in my life mm. in the areas of focus, which were financial business, and I built up a pretty nice little, a nice, pretty nice little business. And uh, <clears throat> this part <laughs> until I was uh, 32, and at that point I'm, I'm waking up, and there's uh, my pillow looks like your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> There's blood on it. Mm, wow. Um, I mean, I, I've got these these ulcers that I'm unable to deal with, and I'm spitting up blood. And, uh, and at 32, I'm told by a heart surgeon that I need to he needs to sit me on his table. Okay. And uh, so, did I have success in my life? Well, in one area, I did absolutely. But did I have an ecology? Did I have success in my health and fitness? No, I'd I'd lost the plot. Mm. At that point, mm. and it was something I had earlier in my life. I have a background in in, in, in fitness, and, and I think you and I we first met. It was yeah. we were watching the fights, I and mean, yeah. that was my background. That's yeah. where my first career path was. I, I thought I could make it as a fighter, so I had fitness at one point, but completely lost it as I shifted my focus to another area. But what, what made you lose it? What, what what made you lose it? Was it time? Was it? Um the fixation of money, was it? It was, uh, God, you know, I think, what, what caused me to lose it? And this, this links a little bit to, to how our brain works, and I, I want, want to talk a little bit about this sure. uh, as we get in a little bit later, is that um, our mind is not always looking out for what's in your best interest. Mm -hmm. It's looking for survival. And so you're looking to survive based on the messages you're telling yourself that is most important. 
And so if I'm telling myself at that point, as I'm starting to get the taste of money and I'm starting to buy things, that everything I buy, I'm paying for with my life, mm. in essence. Mm. But I'm telling myself that this is important and the priorities just shifted. And, um, and you know, for a lot of us out here who get caught in that material world, it's quite intoxicating. Mm. It's quite lovely. And, and as you want to get to the next level of, of housing or the next level of an automobile or take your business to the next level of success, it, it just becomes a primary focus. Mm. So it, it was probably a, a, a lack of awareness allowing my focus to shift mm. because wherever you're, you're, without an intention, your attention follows whatever is the shiniest object in front of you. Mm. And so my attention was just shifting, following this without a greater intention mm. of how do, I be, how do I do this in a sustainable way? Mm. So, at 32, you know, got the big news. And, uh, Did you have an operation? Or? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I, uh, I sold the company right. and said, as of today, I'm changing my life. I need to learn what it is that will allow me to still create success without paying with my life, mm -hmm. without paying with my health. Mm -hmm. And so that changed uh, everything about how I looked at the world, on what I needed to do next. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I was gonna walk away from business. As you know, I'm, I'm still deeply involved in yeah. business. But I did take a hiatus. I did take a period to go and learn um, about how to do it differently. Isn't it interesting, because people always say, no matter what change in someone's life takes place, yeah. whether or not you give up smoking, you modify your drinking or you give it up, you mm. get divorced. They'll always ask that first question. You can put your house on it. What made you do it? Mm. What was the event that made you do it? Um, the single defining moment. And, you know, it'd be nice not to have a single defining moment of, in your case, near death. Yeah. Um, in my case, near death. Yeah. Um, I was rushed off to the hospital with 190 over 140, you know, heart uh, blood pressure. Is that um, why you're not drinking coffee? And I, no, I, 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 I drink coffee, mate. It's in here. Okay. Um, but but um, yeah. that was a defining moment yeah. for me to make a shift, you know, seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Um, I always had a very, very strong uh, platform of fitness. I was, you know, I played National League football in, in Australia. Um, I had that baseline fitness. I had that endurance. Um, but for whatever reason, you know, I lost the focus. Mm. Um, how do we how do we get people to sort of understand yeah. through just normal life that this part of, of your life, this component, this cog in the wheel that makes you live, mm. um, has to become a natural part and a sustainable part, consistent yeah. part of your life. How do we do that? Well, um, I think you are doing it, and I, and I applaud you for doing it. I mean, in, in this podcast, and what you're starting with Peak, is a way of getting messages to, you know, you're not in the room, mm. but you're getting the same message. And you're right that so many people have had that defining moment. They've, they've crawled out of a burning wreckage mm. and said, okay, I'm not going to do that any longer. They, 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 whatever the burning wreckage is, that's a metaphor for yeah. whether it's a relationship or health and fitness, or, or, or an ugly business or professional experience. Mm. And why? Because it takes that much to, to, to slap us out of it. Mm. Because, I mean, the world's pretty easy. Mm. Uh, you know, certainly a lot easier for me than it was for my father. Mm. You know, my, my father didn't have this luxury leaving Eastern Europe and coming over on a boat and being a pioneer and, 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 and clearing land to plant crops. You know, that was all about survival. Mm -hmm. uh, our life's a lot easier than that. And when we are pampered, it's easy to lose, lose touch of those things. And it's not just, again, fitness. It's in whatever area. So how do we get people there is, is by sharing this message to, to not just let your mind lead your life on, a, on, on some default decisions it's making, but to actually step in and control your mind, to be mindful mm. of, of what your actions are. Mm. And so when I look at the, the people that I work with, 
whether they're, they're, it's professional or relationship or health and fitness, if for them to create levels of success in their life. Uh, it's this methodology that I bring in that allows them, hopefully, mm. to make that change before they're rushed to the hospital with blood pressure of 190. Okay, so what, what, what is the methodology? Okay. It's... Because, and I'll tell you, and, and the yeah. word methodology scares people, mm. I think. Sure. Um, and I don't come... I was fortunate to be introduced to you through a mutual friend, as you mm. know, the, the Pacquiao Mayweather fight. Yeah. And we got talking about fitness, and that's how the relationship started. And I've been blessed to know you, and, and, and I think Pete, Pete Freaks are blessed to, to be able to listen to you on this podcast. But um, when we start talking about methodologies right. or numbers or uh, goals, I believe people get scared and turned off. Sure. But nonetheless, let's call it methodology for the time being. Right. So what is that? Okay, beautiful. So there are three components, and it, it's it's not a, a methodology that is... is, is etched in stone where there's no way to maneuver mm. but there are some concepts and the first one is uh, structure mm. so what is the structure that is required to build the success and again whether it's your health and fitness uh, your business or your relationship I mean you can build a relationship there's a structure required mm. what is the structure what is the psychology required what type of thinking do you need to have to stay with that structure? You know, the New Year's goals where people will identify the structure. Mm. Oh, I'm going to join the gym, we'll work out mm. twice a week. And then the psychology doesn't, doesn't support the structure. Mm. The structure falls apart. And so there's, there's structure, there's psychology. And the third part, which is what I, I think maybe what I'm most passionate about now, and it's the newest area, is the science, primarily the brain science. Mm -hmm. What we know about how our brain works, what we need, what we know to support the psychology to keep the structure alive. And so there are three different areas in this this methodology, mm -hmm. and all of them have a set of, of, of uh, uh, maybe not, not not principles, but at least conversations mm. that we need to go through to build a ecological and sustainable mm. success mm. in who's ever life mm. in whatever the domain, mm. business, relationship, mm. health and fitness. So if I wanted to put together a fitness regime or a mm -hmm. nutrition regime or both, right? Um, because I felt that my relationship and my business were running fairly well, Right. Um, how would you apply those three things okay. to me in a conversation or a relationship? Because I, right. I dare say you would have to do this over time. It's not right. something that you could hand me a piece of paper or do a podcast and then we're done. Right. So how do you how do you approach it? All right. So let's take a look at the, the first area, and that is of the structure. So what is the structure? that you're going to bring into your life in order to bring in, in whether it's nutrition or whether it's fitness. Mm. So, uh, <clears throat> who are you going to work out? Who's going to be your trainer? Simple question. So, some, some place to start with. What are you going to do? Mm. You know, the, the I want to get fit, I, I want to exercise, I want to create some success. I mean, look at me. I, I'm probably not going to be focusing on basketball or sumo wrestling. You know, those, 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 that, that structure, if I chose that decision, it is structurally I'm set up myself for failure right there. It's not going to, it's not going to work for me. Mm. Um, so you say pick, pick what you want to do. Is that what you're saying? One where there's a, where success is at least, however you define success, right. but where success can happen. Right. And I'll talk a little bit a little under, uh, under the science about what happens with success and failure. Yeah. So a sustainable structure, an ecological structure. I'm also, if, if I'm only going to work out at this one gym, I got this great trainer, mm -hmm. great trainer, and the gym's across town. So it's an hour and a half commute mm -hmm. to get there, mm -hmm. an hour and a half back for a one hour workout. So I'm putting in four hours to work out. Is that sustainable? 
doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So the, the structure is already set up that I'm probably not going to have success in this. I'm not going to have, have uh, um, uh, any victories. I'm not going to reach any level of peak performance. So it's what is it I'm going to do? Is my, is my body uh, capable? Am I aligned with that type of exercise? Where am I going to do it? When am I going to do it? Okay. And so it's, it's the simplest part mm. is the structure. So is, it, is that the logistics? Yeah, the logistics. Okay. Let's yeah. look at that. Okay. And, and, and so that's the simplest part. Mm. That's the, the foundation. Mm. And if that's, if that's designed poorly, then everything else on top is going to crumble. Okay. So how much thought goes into designing the logistics of your workout program, mm. your nutritional program? Mm. You know, I'm, I'm only going to eat these organically grown vegetables, but I only have access to them once a week. Mm. I travel a lot. If I'm not in town the day of the fresh market, what am I going to do? Not eat for a week. Right. So it's, it's, it's that whole logistics, the structure part. And that's where I think most people start. And they, they build on, here's what I'm going to do. And again, whether it's in your business or whether it's in, in your lifestyle, in your health or your fitness or in your relationship, here's what we're going to do. Uh, and then we don't get the success that we need. Okay. So you, you have been enormously valuable to me in conversations that we've had about people that I work with right? Um, in different businesses, peak and, and other things that we do. And you have given me nuggets of gold with respect to how do you incorporate a degree of structure mm -hmm. into all logistics, yeah. into some people who aren't necessarily born or wired or have the DNA of structure like you and I have, yeah. because we have a high degree of structure. Mm -hmm. These guys do not. Maybe they're photographers or videographers or artists or right. whatever. But they're not wired like you and I are. Mm -hmm. So someone like that comes along to you and says, look, I need to get fit. You know, I'm struggling to get out of bed in the morning. I'm struggling to walk up the stairs. Um, you know, I'm short of breath all the time. Uh, I don't feel good with the food I eat. You know, and, and, and you sit down, they ask for your guidance. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you go about teaching them, or not teaching them, but certainly uh, enlightening them to some baseline logistics. Yeah. What, what does someone need to think through? Wonderful. Now, now, when you mentioned that you and I, we've had some meetings before, and I remember like the, the structure, those, that whiteboard yeah. meeting, right? Where we right. had, we've had this in, that whiteboard, and it was structured, but it was also a whiteboard, mm. right? We could erase any part of it. We could redraw. It was, it was flexible, and there was structure in it. And we did. We evolved. We had lines pointing everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But now you're talking, someone who comes in who's not wired that way that says, no, I don't like structure. That's not my thing. That's not the way I am. I'm an artist. I, I invent. I create. So that takes us out of the structure element into the second element, which is the psychology. Mm. So what is the psychology that's required to design a structure and then sustain the structure? Mm. And if we look at, at this uh, meta program of, of people who like uh, structure and people who like options. Mm. They're at opposite ends, right? Mm -hmm. So here I am, let's say I'm someone who's very structure driven, comes meet a guy like me, beautiful, let's design it. But someone who's option driven, mm -hmm. very creative, mm -hmm. very artistic and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and flexible and open to what the world presents and, mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. How does someone like this bring this in? Mm -hmm. Well, just to stop you there, these option guys, yeah. are these option guys do I, I maybe wrongly? I put people who make excuses into that option bucket. Mm. Is that a fair way to look at it? Uh, because well, we can explore more about what you mean by that. But my first answer would be um, no. no. And we're going to see where excuses come from. Okay. Uh, when we get to the science part, all right. Okay. Because there's I, a science to I, excuses. I, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. I'm used to that because yeah. that's all I. Tend to hear. But right. Let's talk about. Let's go back to the to, to the, okay. the options and the structure. Yeah, because I'm confronted with that a lot. Sure. Now uh, I, I would defy someone to tell me to show me where there are any one of these in all areas of their life. 
It's all context driven. Mm. So there are certain areas of your life where you are very structured, and there are some areas of your life where you may be less structured. Mm. For example, we came into this room today. This was not the room that you had in, originally intended to do the podcast in. And you said, well, mate, let's just make it work. Mm. Well, that wasn't structured. Mm. So you showed a high level of flexibility mm. already in bringing in options and said, okay, let's do it. You had the structure, which had you make the original arrangements, and then when they didn't manifest the way you wanted, you allowed options to come in. Mm. So even if you're highly structured, what you're seeing right now is Mark being very option-oriented. Mm. Now, if we look at someone who is option-oriented and they go, that's the way I am, well, probably not in all contexts. I mean, I'm guessing that they're pretty structured in their breathing. I'm, you know, I'm sure their breathing isn't random. Mm. They're probably quite structured in, 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 in their heartbeat. Mm. They're structured in uh, maybe not what they eat, but when they eat. They're structured in... So we, we, we can start to see from the psychology of it that there's a belief that I don't do structure to challenging that belief to say, well, that's not always true, is it? Mm. And as long as we can, once we get that opening, once we can shine a bit of light onto it and say, all right, so where, where could you bring some structure in that would uh, add value to you, mm. that, would, that would serve you, mm. and still maintain the amount of option that works for you? Okay. So let's take an example, because it can get up awfully confusing. Mm -hmm. So you've got a guy who likes to wake up, who, who's a writer. You know, and sure. I know a guy who writes for one of the major airlines in, in Thailand. Right. Um, uh, can't function during the day. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, gets up in the morning and has a couple of beers Beautiful. in the morning. Has his big meal in the morning. Yeah. Uh, whilst you and I are probably working out at the gym uh, and, and starting work. Um, and then he will have a sleep for the majority of the day mm -hmm. and then start to write, have another meal sort of late at night, 10, 11 o'clock, and then we'll start to write at midnight till about 7 o'clock in the morning Fine. when we're sleeping. Right. How do you deal with a guy like that? Does that serve? Well, in terms of his fitness, because he's ex he, well, his reason mm -hmm. for not working out is his work right. and his lifestyle. Right. So how do you bring in or, or include a bit of structure whilst maintaining some degree mm -hmm. of option. Right. Is that an example that we could apply to what you're saying? Sure. So we could look at that. And now if you're the, the trainer mm. in this case, uh, this is where we would ask you to go from your structure to being option. And rather than asking him to come to where you are, you come to where he is. So, so what are the exercises that can be done at two in the morning. Mm -hmm. What are the exercises? That, what is a fitness regime that could be brought in? If this, if this lifestyle is serving the person and they're content with it, there's no need to change it. Now, if they say, oh, I really want to change, but I can't, I just sleep, then that, that takes us to something else. Well, well okay, let's speak that issue. This is very interesting because the personal trainers that I deal with, the majority of them, and I'm generalizing here, mm -hmm. are of a mindset. It is of a very structured mindset. And I'm not sure what experience you've had, but when you look at it, they've got certain hours. Yeah. And those certain hours are generally eight to eight. Mm -hmm. right? And in between that. Sure. Okay? The gym opens that time, people work out during that time, and they generally have regimented quiet times when people are out, their clients are working or, or eating or, or doing whatever. Mm -hmm. okay? So um, they've got a regimen. Um, they've also got regimen in the fact that you do eight sets of four right. reps of this weight yeah. and you're sticking to a plan. So I think personal trainers are of an ilk that are very structured. Now, interesting, is it the personal trainer that needs to look at themselves in context of what we're discussing to a large degree? And changing that model, right? Or is it the client being the yeah. writer or the artist or Joe Bloggs, who's just generally maybe a lazy person? Yeah. So you're bringing a different insight into this conversation, which I've not thought of before. To be fun, to, okay. to be uh, to be um, uh, honest. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that the the, the, the trainer's got accountability 
to this structure option um, situation. Sure. Well, and, and four years ago, I guess, is when I first started working on a larger scale with personal trainers. Mm. And so following exactly what you're saying is that working with personal trainers that if you choose to follow the societal norms and the trusted norms and you want to work eight to five in this environment, fair enough, you can't do that. <clears throat> and who are we catering to? We're catering, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, what is it, singing to the choir, mm. right? We're already getting those people who are coming to the gym. But if we want to make a bigger difference, if we want to go outside, what flexibility do we need as personal trainers to inspire the uninspired? Mm. And and so we didn't, you know, we didn't talk much about what uninspired was. And uninspired can be, I can never get fit because it doesn't work with my lifestyle, like the writer. Uninspired can be, I've hit a plateau. I've been here for 18 months. I can't, I can't run any faster or any further or, or lift any, any, any more. Mm. Or the uninspired, which recently happened to me, an injury. And, uh, and then you just kind of... That I sort of just fell off the whole plan and so became uninspired in that area. So how do we inspire wherever people are coming from? Mm. If you're in a gym waiting for people who have already paid a membership to join a gym to say, help me get fit, you're speaking to only that small percentage of the market. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to go outside of that, then maybe, we need to shift from structure to be a little more flexible. Mm. How, do you, how do you work out with a guy, with a person, who has committed to this already, this part of their lifestyle, and still wants to be, bring a level of fitness mm. into it? So is it not true that we couldn't take someone who has four beer for breakfast to be a little healthier and still improve the quality of their life and the length of their life? Certainly we could. We don't have to get them into... Into, in, into this narrow vision of what we think a fit or an athlete you know, needs, to, needs to look like. I'm not necessarily sorry, my HGTV, because this yeah. person will listen to this podcast and know I'm talking about it. Oh, okay. Um, but he, he won't, it's not that he's drinking beer at 6 o'clock in the morning. Right. His days just flip. Sure. It's like the call center guys that work in the Philippines that do right. shift work and finish work at, at 6 o'clock. Yeah. They have nightclubs in the Philippines that start at yes. 7 <laughs> yeah. and go in the daytime. Because yeah. well, that's their normal people's nighttime. Right. So it, it's not just so about the two or three beers because mm -hmm. you can still be fit and have a drink. Right. Um, but it's it's an interesting point that you're raising um, that I've not thought about mm. talking to personal or dealing with personal trainers about, hey, should we be having a good look at ourselves sure. about how we're interacting with our client rather than having it all on our terms? And, and in doing that, so this is... So we, they, they, we have the structure of, okay, I'm a personal trainer, here's my structure, you'll come to my gym between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. and you'll do this. Now we look, what is the psychology of the personal trainer? So as a personal trainer, what is your intention? What is your intention as a personal trainer? Well, you know, I have a job, what's bigger than that? You know, make some money, what's bigger than that? Help people, help who? What is your intention? So we get clear on what that intention is. To help those who are already fit get to the next level? Or is your intention really to help to reach out and help others? What does it mean to you to make a difference in the life of someone who's unable to find a way to bring fitness into their life? What does that mean to you as a personal trainer? And so we, we take a look at the, 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 the psychology of what is guiding the trainer to run their structure. Mm. What do you believe about fitness? Do you believe fitness can only happen in a fitness center? You know, look at look at the change what we've seen in in uh, uh, in fitness over the years. You know, from the Joe Weider ads in the back of the magazines mm. where you set away and you bought plates and that was the only thing you did, mm. to what we have now with the, uh, the high intensive uh, interval training, mm. uh, to working with whether it's a bozu ball or, 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 or a kettlebell. I mean, there's a lot of new ideas that have been coming in. So what does it mean to you as a fitness trainer, as a personal trainer, to bring fitness into someone's life? Mm. And, and what, is it, 
What do you believe about the kind of person that is maybe living a lifestyle that's turned backwards from yours? Mm. Do you believe that they're lazy? Do you believe they're making excuses? Do you believe they're not trying hard enough? If so, you're probably not going to have a lot of success with them. Do you believe that they need to come over to your model? Or do you believe that you need to be flexible to come over to their model? Mm. We're seeing, as populations aging, a huge shift in personal trainers on working with seniors. Mm. So what are you doing with a senior? You're teaching a senior hand strength. You're teaching a senior balance and a little bit of mobility so that they can have a higher quality of life. Mm. That's a little different than what you were teaching 20 years ago which was, you know, what's your personal best on the bench. Mm -hmm. So the, looking into the, the, the psychology of whether it's, uh, uh, you know, if we talk about your friend, the rider here, what do you believe fitness means? And does he believe fitness means I have to go to a gym during the day? As long as you believe that, it's not going to happen, is it? Mm -hmm. What, and, 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 and what does it mean to you to be fit? And if his idea of fit is, well, i got to run ultra marathons like my good buddy Mark, well, that structure may not match his body and his lifestyle. Mm. So therefore, he's just going to fail, isn't he? Mm. So when you're talking about uh, the last couple of years, you doing work with personal trainers, yeah. do you talk about this stuff to them? Yeah. Because... To me now, and, and this is the beauty of meeting new people uh, who do different things and doing these podcasts, mm -hmm. um, as well as working with them in different capacities, uh, you're learning every minute of every conversation. And uh, I've never thought up until right now, believe it or not, that it's does the responsibility rest with the personal trainer? Mm to checklist all of this or validate all of this right. and create a personalized program, i.e. personal trainer, yeah. personalized program that fits the client or the trainee mm -hmm. rather than doing it on the personal trainer's agenda. Right. And I'm starting to think, uh, does is that where the model falls down? Mm. Right? Because all I hear personal trouble, most personal trainers say is they're lazy. They keep on changing their schedule. They don't try hard enough during their sessions, really? um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So is it the personal trainer or is it the trainee? Well, and, and, and it's both. Or is it so, the blind leading the blind? So sure. Well, if, if the trainee is saying, uh, I can't make it into that, or uh, I'm... I'm, I'm going to miss this workout, or I'm only working at half speed today. I'm I'm, I'm not or not working to a personal best. Mm. That's to be accepted. I mean, that, that's natural. That's mm. how our body mm. works. So this is where, well, come on, let me put another plate on for you. Let me spot you and give me ten more. Mm. But instead, to go to the psychology mm. behind what's happening in the workout, mm. and and from the psychology to make a difference in their trainer or in, in their client so that they can achieve some results. Mm. This gets a little bit into the, into the brain science as well. But even here in, in that psychology, to, for someone to make a change in their life, for years it was, how do people change? Mm. Oh, they don't change. Mm. Or there's just a moment that happens mm. as we started in the talk and then they change. No, there is, there is a psychology to mm. change. Mm. And this is some, some fantastic work, maybe about three, four years ago, I'm not sure, by uh, uh, Dr. Hall, Dr. Michael Hall, on the psychology of change. And he's got eight very distinct steps in the process of creating change. So if I got a client, how do I create change in that person's life? If they want change, just because I want it doesn't mean it's going to happen. I have all of this stuff holding me back. I have my identity. And yeah, I'd like to be fit, but I've never been fit. I'd like to be fit, but, you know, I was teased at school, so I can't be fit. I'd like to be fit, but it means I have to go to a gym. All of these, these internal psychological roadblocks stopping me. How can we get past that? And so these eight steps in the psychology of change are uh, first two are a couple of conversations. If this change was to happen... 
what would happen then? What would you have as a result when you make this change? What's on the other side? What is there waiting for you when you're starting to bring fitness into your life? What impact will it have? What difference will it make in your life? And the second conversation, of course, is what if you don't? What happens if you continue the path you're on? So this is just the first two parts of how we get to change. The second is we start probing deeper. Because our first answer is just going to be logical level. What happens if you work out? Well, I'll, uh, I'll feel better. Okay, what happens if you don't? Uh, well, I'll die sooner. Okay, simple answers. But now we start to probe and get really deep. And what will happen then? And what will it mean to you that you're around? What will it mean to you for you to be there to, to be able to walk down the aisle at your kid's wedding? Mm -hmm. What will that mean? What will that be like? Mm. What would it be like not to live long enough to go to your kid's wedding? Mm. What impact will it have in their life? Mm. So we, we, we then magnify what's happening in here to get out of just the, the basic, logic, simple answer, oh, it'll be good if I have it, it'll be bad if I don't, mm. but to start to get to an emotional mm. area here. And then we start to provoke. Well, are you ready to do it yet? And if they're ready, great. If not, we go back and we dig a little bit deeper. But mm. well, what else will that mean? Who else will you leave behind? Mm. What, will what will your legacy be? Mm. What will your legacy be on this side? Mm. And we start to amplify it, and then are you ready, to, are you ready to, to step into making this change now? Are you ready to start now? Until we have uh, so much power, both on the positive and negative side, and some people are more one side than the other. But until we have that, that motivation, are they ready to say, okay, I'm ready to give it a go? Great. Now let's create something. Now let's design the structure. So from here, we then get into the fifth step of designing what the structure is going to look like. Mm. Not starting with the structure. Mm. So, sorry, go ahead. I thought you start with the structure. No. Yeah, no. Okay. So now we're ready to design the structure right, of okay. what it's going to be and then start testing it. Mm. Let's go try it out. Mm. See if it works for you. Mm. First time I went to the gym, I come back. I go, you know what? Traffic at 6 o'clock doesn't work for me. Okay. Because now I get home and I miss dinner uh, with mm. my kids and they're in bed by the time I get home. Mm. And I leave in the morning, which mm. means in order for me to get fit, I have to sacrifice my life with my kid. So it's almost like getting back to that basic principle of 70. Sell me the pen. So you, you, you almost do a psychological fact find with mm. a person, with each client, yeah. right, to put it in a basic sense, and then from that you then build a structure. It, it, it's similar in the fact that you're never selling anything. Mm. The other person is buying. Okay, sure. And that's, that's the key difference. Sure. But, but, but then from that, you've created the awareness, you've created the willingness, mm -hmm. the intent, and then the structure. Yeah. And you build a structure with all best endeavors right. to find out that logistically things don't go the way they're right. planned, i.e. Fridays. Right, and, and so then we're looping in here, we're right, looping okay. in here, mm. and then when we find this one is working, okay, mm. this is nice, reinforce. Right. So now we're at step seven. Okay, what do we need to do to reinforce this? Mm. And so the reinforcement would be uh, a workout buddy. A uh, reinforcement would be getting green from the family. Mm. The reinforcement, whatever the reinforcement mm. is that we design to support that structure. Mm. We build that in, and then we continually come back and test. Is it still working? Is it still working? Mm. And so this is where the personal trainer will schedule maybe every 90 days a session out of the gym. Mm. and to have the conversations. How are we doing? How are you feeling about where we're getting? Mm. Are you pleased with what you're seeing? What would you mm. like more of? What would you like less of? What would you like different? And to really take a risk because you're laying yourself as a trainer on the line to be judged by your client. What do you want me to do more of, less mm. of, or different? Mm. How am I serving you? What could I do to serve you better? Mm. And maybe it's, I need another trainer. Mm. Maybe it's our, I want to change the structure. Mm. Maybe it's something else. Have the confidence to do that. Mm. But that is in, 
and it's, it's, it's called the psychology of change, mm -hmm. is where change takes place. Mm -hmm. It's not a moment. Okay. As much as we hear a lot of people, change takes place in a moment. Well, what that moment is, is has to be a shift in all of our thinking. Mm. But then if that shift in all of our thinking isn't supported by structure, by family, by the ecology, by everything we need, and if that change isn't giving us the result we want, that change isn't going to be sustainable. No. The concept may be, yes. but so what? I'm not going to the gym. No. So these eight steps are an important part of how we create the change in someone's life mm. after this psychological conversation. Mm. What, what does it mean to you to be fit? Why do you want to be fit? What do you believe about being fit? What does fit mean to you? Mm. If fit means, you know, the horrible damage that's been done by the magazine ads, right? <laughs> if fit means looking like that, well, no wonder you're not going to the gym. Because that's almost... I, I will guarantee you, BJ, the, the conversations that 99.9% .9 of the uh, personal trainers have yeah. is, BJ, for a thousand baht an hour, I'll work out, I'll be your personal trainer three or four times a week with you, yeah. and I will make you look like a supermodel. Right. That's, I believe, the degree of conversation and the depth of conversation that he's had. Fair enough. That's what they're taught. That's right. what, not they, like, we're judgment. I mean, we're all, we, we, we're all... Well, we're getting it from somewhere, because that's the majority of the trainers that I hear sure. say. So, they're either making it up themselves, and there's a consistency in the market, mm -hmm. or they're being trained by an institution to, to say that. Well, and it's, it's, and it's what you know. It. I mean, yeah. I'm only talking about what I know. Yes. And how you can apply that to and how it can apply it to whatever. But mm -hmm. if I'm a personal trainer and what I know is how to use a TRX, then I'm going to talk about how you can use the TRX mm -hmm. to bring fitness into your life. Mm -hmm. If that, that's the only part that I've been trained in. But my problem, my problem that I see is, is how do you get the average punter who's got twenty sure. limitations of lifestyle, right, and stresses and relationship yeah. and, and 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 whatever, yeah. uh, into that TRX, yeah. The, TR, the technical aspect of training someone how to use a TRX is basic. Yeah. It's the stuff leading up to getting in front of, or her in front of that TRX is where the major obstacle lies. Hence, you're here to explain it. Right? Well, you know, I mean, that's really the main basic concept behind most of marketing, right? Is you go mm. for the center of the curve, right? Mm. This is where the people are. Mm. So let's focus for these people. Mm the low-hanging fruit, mm. those are already in. Yeah. But if, if we, even if we have these, what do we do so they don't run away the first time uh, their muscles are sore? Mm. <laughs> so they don't quit the first mm. time it becomes more work than they thought. Mm. And if you can design your program and your, your, your style to cater to those on this end and this end, well, the middle takes care of itself. Mm. But most of us, just to get, I mean, the quickest return on, on our investment is, what do we do for this? Mm. What do we do for the masses? Mm. Mm. This this group that are already in the gym? But, and so if you already got the guy that has done all of this stuff and joined the gym, then maybe you can get by with just saying, let me tell you about my uh, my fitness modality mm. that I use. Mm. But I think there's a universe over here and over here sure. that, that, that personal trainers aren't tapping into because they're lacking the awareness and the skill, not right. through their fault, just by virtue of where we're at, sure. that you're talking about. Yeah. Because, just take the elderly as an example. Right. How many times, I mean, I've been to tens of hundreds of gyms, or tens of gyms, mm -hmm. like, across Bangkok and all parts of the world, and very rarely do I see personal trainers with older people. Right. Yeah, so there, there's a Why? niche. Mm -hmm. There's a niche. Yeah. Now, it may be that, pers that older people don't want to be personally trained right. for whatever reason. But yeah. is it the personal trainer not tapping into that niche? Um, so I'm not really sure, um, but it's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. Um, we've just had some lighting issues there, but anyway, let's crack on. I see that. Ah, do you want to power that light? Here, i got a power supply for you. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's crack on. Okay. All right. Um, so, 
I think I think for personal trainers there are universes on both sides of the mm -hmm. room that um, they can tap into. Sure, personally, you know, and I mean, I look at uh, at eighty four years old. You know, my my mother didn't miss a yoga class, mm -hmm. so there are some trainers who are able to still work mm -hmm. with those folks that are finding the value. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, certainly she's not doing the downward dog like mm. those <laughs> ideal mm. that you see in the hot yoga class at 6 p.m. but uh, there is is making a high a, an impact on the quality of life yeah. and flexibility and she's and active that. and she's getting out and meeting yeah. people and doing things and right um, no I, I think that's that's great and if, if, if personal trainers can actually do that mm -hmm. and, and get more of that um, so that's the psychology right so structure is where you know, most personal trainers I've met are, they have some pretty good quality in, in the area of structure. You know, a lot. They know about what they're there to train. They, they've got that. Can they match the structure to the individual? Okay, that's their role. That's their responsibility. I'm not going to talk about that. No. So there's technical structure, which, sure, I think they get trained and mm -hmm. they, they do their reading and then they can generally execute that. Right. Then there's matching, as, as, and I'm just running through, through my head here, there's the matching of... The, the personal trainer structure that suits Mark Manolas that will get him to the gym and get the best out of Mark uh, as consistently, sustainably as possible. Mm -hmm. And then there's psychology. Right. Right, of why Mark wants to do it, yeah. uh, what if he does, what if he doesn't, et cetera, et cetera. Knock on effects, all these things. Right. Okay. Then what? Then is the science. Right. So, uh, the the brain science behind what allows these other two areas mm. to, to exist and in the area of uh, neuroscience it's just oh my god it's just so fascinating mm. and just this past few months they've almost doubled their their, their knowledge on um, different regions of the brain they've now mapped I believe it's 180 regions of the brain. Wow. So, you know, we were at about 90 before, you know, okay, we, we knew this is logical thought, and we knew this is creativity center. We've now mapped that to a finer, we, <laughs> they've now mapped that to a finer detail where they're able to see 180 different regions of the brain. And that's mm. still just the beginning. And with this incredible technology breakthroughs in, in how an MRI, you don't have to go in a machine any longer mm. to, to, to map a brain. We can watch in real time as, I, as I'm speaking to you. I can see which words activate which part of your brain. Mm. And so this knowledge is incredible on how we can bring that in and add it to the psychology. Mm. Because the emotion that's required to take any action... Mm. I mean, any action that you take is governed by a feeling or an emotion, which is governed by some thinking or a meaning or a belief or an intention, the psychology of the actual event. Mm. So that, that loop is quite powerful. Mm. And we're able to see it now. So we know when you're working out, when you're, you get that runner's high, you know, mm. when, when the endorphins are flowing and you're feeling pretty good. That's, that's nice. After you finish a run, and maybe you've increased, uh, you've made an increase in, in distance, mm. or you've decreased the amount of time, you've had some little, little level of success, you put an extra plate on the bar, you've, you've stretched a little bit further, uh, that's when you get the dopamine hit. Mm. And that is, that's the reward center in the brain. This mm. is what we get from from, from, from sex, from, from uh, uh, gambling, from, uh, uh, it's the reward system that when you have a victory, boom, you get a little shot of dopamine. Mm. And that is, it's quite nice, mm. you know, it's quite, quite addictive. And, mm. and so if you want more of that, mm. and we want our clients to have more of that as personal trainers, how do we design a program that is all about success? Mm. What, however small the success is, create the success. Mm. Let's start manipulating that chemical factory in the brain mm. to serve us. Because we know that with every level of success, we're getting a little hit of dopamine. And that will continue, for, for, allow someone to continue to build, continue to build, continue to build. 
You give me a workout that I fail at or beyond my capability mm. or one that leaves me feeling worse than when I came in. Mm. I don't mean I have to be smiling while I work out because mm. that's not what flow or peak mm. is, right? Mm. The, the, the peak or flow state is after the workout mm. when you say, hey, I did that. That was pretty mm. good. Mm. Not a lot of people smile in the marathon, but yeah. they smile after the marathon. Yeah. So it's that, that dopamine. How are you designing the workout so that that chemical factory is serving you and serving your client? Mm. Because when there's a, a failure, what happens is there's, a, there's the markers in the brain and the, the dopamine level after a failure will drop below a baseline. Mm. And the danger of that is that can start, as much as success can spiral up, failure can spiral down. Decrease dopamine levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then, what what is amazing about this is, and this was when you when you talked earlier about people uh, being lazy or procrastinating. Mm -hmm. I forget what the word was. You mean mm -hmm. what you use? Making excuses. Making excuses. Making excuses is a success. So what happens is we're tricking our brain. I went Sorry, to the gym. Mate, repeat that again. Yeah, mate, uh, mate, I went mate. to the gym. I had a, a good workout, yeah. right? I got the hit. Hey, I want to go back again. I want to go back again. Mm. I want to go back again. And it builds and it builds mm. and it builds. Fantastic. I worked out. I failed. I didn't do really well. Mm. I felt quite poorly. All right. Now it's time to go meet my PT again. I'm anxious about mm. it. I don't mm. want to go. I'm feeling mm. kind of poorly, right? Mm. So I make an excuse. Mm. What has that excuse just done? It's got me out of the workout. Mm. Yay. Oh, okay. Got I get you. a dopamine hit. Got you. I get rewarded for mm. failing. Mm. Short term, but I get the reward. You get the hit. I just called Mark. I canceled the training session today. Yay, I don't have to work out. Dopamine's up. You're happy. Life's good. I got rewarded for failure. Interesting. Now, isn't that a scary idea? So how now, and, and, and it's with excuses, it's with failing, it's with procrastinating, it's why I'm going to put something off. Yay, I want another lottery. I want another time lottery. I got another day, another hour, whatever. And failure can start to spiral in the opposite way. Mm. And... Uh, <laughs> and even though we know this, doesn't mean we're immune to it. Mm. And well, it's funny. It, it, sorry to cut you off, mate. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast last night. It was yeah. a three-hour podcast. I was thirty-five minutes into it before I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. um, and it was with a pharmacologist. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I'm racking my brains to recall who it was. The podcaster was Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. and I can't remember who the pharmacologist was. The first time I've ever heard of dopamine levels and the impact they have was on this podcast. Oh, and it's okay. coincidental you're raising them now. Mm -hmm. So I'd be very surprised people understand personal trainers or just the normal punter. Yeah. The impact of dopamine levels. Right. And so, amazing. Whose responsibility is it? They don't. If, if 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 we want to create where we started at the beginning, mm. success in someone's life, mm. and in my case, it's creating success in your life personally. Maybe running your practice, or you're running your your training business, or if you're an executive, to create that success, or in your relationships, or in your fitness, because we need all three to have a healthy ecology. Any one is broken, all three suffer. Mm. So we want to have all three. So if you do want to create success in those areas, structure, psychology, and science. Mm. And if you're aware of it and you can step in and do it yourself, fantastic. You want more information, I don't know, my email will probably be available yeah. somewhere. More information, of course, you can contact me and I can you know, send out some tips or videos mm. or more explaining this. Mm. But bring it into your own life. See how it works. Mm. And then you start to share it with your clients, with your staff, with your partner, with mm. your kids, with whoever else is in your life. Mm. So that you can start. I mean, it's what peak is all about. Mm. It's where you started at the very beginning. Mm. How, 
how do we have more people aware of this? Well, it's, it's up to you to live it and go share it with other mm. people. That's what mm. we're doing. Mm. So now you take it mm. and, and you continue. You do the same thing with it. Mm. And that spiral down is easy. You know, I've been talking about, I had a, a shoulder injury. Mm. 13 months uh, without stepping foot in a gym, unable to run, right. unable to swim. And, I mean, just watching my body fall apart every day as I look in the mirror. And it starts with, well, maybe in today's cup of coffee, instead of just drinking a black coffee, well, what the hell, no, I'll put a little bit of cream in it. Yeah. Why not? Who cares? I'm not working out anyway. Yeah. So I've just added, I don't know how many calories in a hit of cream. Mm. I'm in Vietnam, I'll use the condensed sweet milk. Wow. How many calories in that? Poison. Well, maybe I'll have a little piece of cake with it as mm. well. Mm. Mm. And and then my the reward system just starts building so and this building the do and building. The, the dopamine now starts going up in those cases. I'm rewarding myself with a so piece of cake. So it keeps on going up. Sure. That's fascinating. Yeah, and so I'm I'm spiraling into a physical failure. Mm. I'm feeling okay mm. because as soon as I'm not feeling okay, mm. I know how to get a hit. Okay, so I know just to go down and get a macadamia nut brownie is going to help me feel good for 15 minutes. So, now that I'm back in the gym, it's been a lot of work to recover. So I'm, I'm now, mate. I'm now yeah. intrigued on how is it that that you stop that from happening? How do you adjust your mindset? What techniques are there to adjust your mindset mm -hmm. to stop that from happening? Sure. So, for not putting the condensed milk in the right. coffee, for not putting the cream up, for not having the macadamia brownie, how do you do that? All right. Because if you continue to decrease your dopamine levels. Sure. So, so how, how, to, how to do that? I mean, it's almost a drug, right? Oh, it is. A pill. Oh, it's it, almost it, a pill. It is a chemical. I mean, every emotion you feel is a, is a chemical. Mm. And each hit usually is about, you know, 20 minutes. You've seen someone upset and you said, calm down. Mm. You can't calm down. Mm. Give somebody four shots of vodka and say, sober up. You can't. It takes time mm -hmm. for your body to process mm. that chemical. Mm. So when, when, when you've got that message and your, your hippocampus went back to stored memories mm. and said, oh, this is good or bad or whatever, mm. and then the amygdala says, all right, let's send out a little bit of this. And then and, and, and you you've got that chemical going through your bloodstream, that is now you. Mm. And if it's not in check, then you get something's called emotional flooding, mm. and then you're just you know you're you're, you're out of control. Mm. So what do we do from the if, if the science is no longer supporting us? Mm. Again, there's three pieces: structure mm. and psychology. Mm. So one of the easiest is structure. So how do I not eat crap when I'm at home? No crap ever comes into my home. Mm. It's that simple. Mm. And if I if it means well, I don't I don't have the willpower when I go shopping, then I shop online. Mm. So I use your good friends at Sunshine Market and other places. I go online. I order only the food I want, mm. and only that comes into my home. So the structure is already there. <laughs> Around my office, I've I've selected six restaurants where I can go for lunch. So I've gone to these six restaurants, I've looked through the menu, and I've decided, okay, what I can have here, what I can have here, what I can have here. So I, that's it. So there's no temptation. My structure is, when someone says, where do you want to go for lunch? One of these six. Mm. When I go in, bring me the steamed fish. Bring me the grilled chicken. Mm. And one of these restaurants is, is quite funny. I went in a while ago, and there was someone new working. And she said, what do you have? And I said, well, I'll have uh, the grilled chicken breast. And she said, uh, do you want fries with that? And one of the other girls, two tables overheard and looked and said, I'm fucking crazy. You don't <laughs> ask him that. <laughs> and she says, what? I said, no, you don't, you don't ask me if I want fries. You just bring Gee. me salad. Wow. And she says, okay, I'll bring you salad. I said, no, you already asked me. Bring me the fries. So my willpower mm. is not strong as the structure. The structure is just bring me the salad. If you ask me, uh, I'll have the fries, why not? Yeah, yeah. And so I have the fries. Mm. So as much structure as you can bring in, mm. and then, again, the psychology, going back to, well, what is my intention? Mm. What does it mean to me to get fit? Mm. What do I, 
why am I going through now this rehab process instead of enjoying the life that I had 60 days ago of eating cake and mm -hmm. drinking lattes? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is the psychology? So going back to well, what are my motivations and what are my, my, my beliefs mm -hmm. and what is my intention from this? What is, what is the intention to be fit? Do you have a, do you have a, a check and, and, and we'll be putting stuff out to, to viewers and you know through tweets and through sort of Facebook and through our, uh, the website because a lot of this stuff is, is, is critically important I think to, to mm -hmm. people who are interested. Um, do, you have, do you have any sort of, uh, and I'll use that word you used before, methodology or structure right. or checklist yeah. that's basic enough for people to be able to sit down with someone yeah. to build yeah. the structure to a point where at least over time it's the 80-20 rule at best. Sure. You know, because, I mean, look, I think you and I are a little bit anal, but there's nothing bad about that, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if we can get 80% of our viewers or followers to do 80% of, of, of the right things 80% of the times, I think we've won. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we've got some good results. Yeah. But the battle is how do people take that first step? Right. I mean, they don't know what's out there. Yeah. You know, and, and I guess that's the stuff that uh, we're going to look at with that, I've, that I've been teaching. And mm. So some of it is, is, is really simple. There are like 45-minute uh, sessions, mm. and it'll be um, of one of the concepts. Mm. So maybe it's the one on uh, enrolling somebody. Mm. How do you enroll someone into the concept of fitness? Not, not the guy who's already joined the gym. Yeah. But how do you enroll these people mm. to come in to fitness? Mm. And so there's a, a little, and it, it's, a, it's a methodology, but it also has the flexibility. Mm. You don't use my language. You just use my con, not even my concepts. I mean, uh, this isn't from me. Mm. Right? This isn't from me. This is, this is from greater brains. This is proven. This is science. But what, how do you, you, you take that structure and make it fit you? So, you know, these are, uh, I guess these are the programs that I've been bringing to personal trainers mm -hmm. over the last four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far there's been uh, six separate modules, each on a different area. Yeah. You know, what do you do when someone's uh, plateaued? Right. Uh, what do you do with the with the person that's making the excuse? Mm -hmm. What is a what is a, a language pattern or something mm -hmm. that you can use in that environment to bring someone back in? And people subscribe to, to these packages or sign up to. How do they get access to them? Okay, uh, to date they have been live. Right. So you come to my programs when I'm teaching them right. live. But <clears throat> as I mentioned with you, that I think here on the peak site would be a lovely place for me to uh, digitize these programs to make them available. Mm. So that's my intention when Mark invited me to come on here is if you have interest in this, I'll prepare the content and make it available in a way that is accessible, there's no travel, uh, affordable, Mm. You know, you don't you don't have to pay the fees of sitting in a room or the travel in the hotel, all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, I think as you gather from what we're talking about here, it's mm. it's simplified. Mm. The brain's complex and it's simple. Mm. Complex in what it does, but simple in how we can work with it. Mm. There's just a couple of simple things that we can do here, so the structure works. Mm. There's a few simple things we can do here. So the science supports us. Yeah, because I'll tell you, a couple of things that you've said there. I think we have an enormous following in the, uh, from the Eastern Bloc countries, mm. believe it or not. Sure. So all the, the traffic that comes through peak, majority of it comes through Europe and the Eastern Bloc countries over there, which is surprising for whatever reason. Jin uh, Dabra to my Polish brothers and sisters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you've been playing with it, have you? Okay, so we've got that. The other thing is, I think the, the 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 challenge with today's world is that there is an over um, uh, there's there's too much communication. I mean, access is enormous, mm. um, and there's just too much out there. And there's this, the, you know, the rhetoric about fake news and you yeah. know, all this stuff is right. is out of control. So I think people are now just grabbing whatever is top of Google and they're using that. So if we could get something that simplifies 
you know, what you've said, the structure, the psychology and the science. Right. And people are able to apply that to their students or their, their trainees or to their organisations. And I want to talk a bit about staff. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, I think we'd go a long way in creating value for our followers. Mm -hmm. um, because that's what I think they, they need. They need some simplicity, succinctness, and some, uh, you know, some sort of methodology to use that word to, 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 to improve the way they deal with things. But staff, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, most people work. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people that I know who are, who are bosses um, and have very important people underneath them mm -hmm. executing work. And the amount, and I know a lot of people who are trying to tap into that corporate wellness right. uh, arena and aren't doing particularly well. Mm -hmm. There are only a select few that I know have, have had success. The ones who have tapped into it, have tapped into it, but the feedback I get is that, that they're not doing very well at it. Or the results, sorry, I'll rephrase that. The results coming out of it sure. aren't as what the payee or the payer expected. Right. What work do you do in terms of the corporate work? Mm. Because if I've got eight executives, yeah. they're all valuable to me in different ways. Right. I want to make sure they're on top of their game and they're fit, yeah. they've got happy relationships, and yeah. they're, they're doing well at work. So how do you deal with it? Do you do any work in that arena? I do, and, and I, I think, Mark, what you're touching on is there's a distinction between what people need and what people want. Mm. Uh, so let's see, uh, over the last, I guess, 19 years now mm. uh, that I've been doing this, and I've only gone to focus on the fitness sector, uh, or, or to include the fitness sector, uh, four years ago. Mm. So for the whole 15 years prior, it was all in the corporate environment. Mm. And it's customizing this so it, it, the beauty of a methodology is, is it's a process. The content, this cup is a process. Mm. The content could be coffee, the content could be tea, the content could be water, but the process is proven. Mm. The process doesn't change. Mm. And this methodology, this stuff about understanding structure and psychology and science is a process. Mm. And when I bring it into an organization, it's brought in a way that allows each of you to bring your own content. So if you want to talk about how you, how, how is this going to repair the relationship with you and your kid? How is it going to take your personal relationship to a higher level? How are you going to get a personal relationship? Mm. How is it going to allow you to find someone to be with? How is it going to allow you to run your company better, to work with your investors, to communicate to your employees, mm -hmm. to communicate to your customers, to bring in a level of fitness? It's back to that ecology mm -hmm. that we have to have all this methodology. We have to apply to all areas of your life. You got a dysfunctional family, your fitness is going to suffer. And, and I'm almost guaranteed that if you die, your business is going to suffer because very few dead people are Can calling the employees. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's taking the methodology and adding your content. Mm. And that's what I, I guess, what I teach when I come into organizations. Mm. Mm. And, uh, um, you know, right after we finish here, I'm heading off to, to an airport today right. because I'm off to do it with a... With, with another company uh, uh, tomorrow for the next uh, two, three days, mm. I'll, I'll be in-house mm. teaching this kind of stuff for, okay. for organizations. Mm. But the, the, the distinction there, again, Mark, is that it's what do people want versus what do they need? Mm. I remember learning that I don't know, 20 years ago when McDonald's brought out a hamburger. I don't know if you had it in Australia. It was called the Muck Fresh. No. And they said, mm. all right, well, people need to eat healthy. And they came out with this burger, and it was in a styrofoam packet, and you had all salad on one side, and you got to make your own burger with all of these healthy ingredients, mm. and they never sold any. What you need versus what you want. Yeah. And they said, here's a need. People said, we don't want it. Mm. What we want is this. Mm. So how you can give someone what they want that is also going to serve the industry or your organization with what you need. Mm. And that's how we package. We, what I've been talking with you today, yeah. that's why I packaged to bring it into to mm. people. And again, mm. I'm, 
happy to share any information. Anyone wants to uh, jump on a Skype call with me or, or, or send me an email, and I'm, I'm happy to share more detail mm. than what we've been able to get into yeah. and customize it for you. Mm. How does this apply to your life in particular? I'm not sure how how this level, how it came across. I, I hope that it, it was of value to you and like, value to you. Mark. No, it is. And I think, I think just judging by the conversations I have with people, they lack the exposure to this type of stuff. Mm. And I think any entry level generic information that we can provide our followers sure. and, and, and then give them a deeper uh, access to information, because everyone is different. Right. Um, everyone's ability to absorb information is different, to then communicate that information onwards is different. Um, I think it's great. So, you know, I mean, I look forward to obviously working with you um, a lot more broadly. Um, I think tonight's been very insightful. Um, and I think for peak freaks around the world, um, check out the website. Uh, we will be having some stuff on there that sort of support and goes into greater detail. Um, right. That, that uh, as BJ said, you can either uh, subscribe to, use, download, we'll work out ways that, um, that you can have access to that. Um, and I think BJ, um, it's been a pleasure having you on the program, mate. Great fun. Thank you very much. Till next time. Thanks. Thanks. See you, mate. All right. Okay. And be well. <laughs>